This video is sponsored by Lomi. This thing is amazing. More on that in just a minute. When it comes to residential solar, California has always led the way thanks to a ton of sunshine, high prices, and a ton of financial incentives. But a new proposal by the California Public Utilities Commission might cast some serious clouds over California's solar future. Proponents say that the legislation will increase solar proliferation in the Golden State while helping lower income residents access green energy. But the proposal has drawn some major criticism from environmental agencies and big industry players like Elon Musk. So what exactly does this new proposal propose? And what could it mean for solar energy, not just in California, but in the whole US and really the entire world? We thought these questions deserved a deeper dive today on 2Bit DaVinci. Right now, California has over 1.3 million residential solar customers, with nearly as much capacity as the rest of the U.S. combined, producing roughly 40% of the nation's total residential solar energy. California's solar electric industry dates all the way back to the groovy 70s when amateur farmers used solar energy to grow some questionable crops. I think you all know what I'm talking about. Solar was expensive, but state legislators knew the significance of clean renewable energy. In the coming decades, the Bear Republic began rolling out revolutionary net metering laws allowing residents who adopted solar technology to receive payment from utility companies for offsetting energy consumption, especially during peak hours. These incentives were in no small part why California solar boomed for the next 30 years. Today, over 20 states offer incentives for owning solar panels, making this legislation all the more crucial. Where California goes when it comes to solar, so goes the rest of the country. Now, we're not going to dive into the entire 200-page proposal, but we will put it in the link below if you want to check it out for yourself. So here's what the proposal is trying to do. They're trying to add a base rate if you have solar, roughly $8 per kilowatt of installed solar. The average system in California is between 5 and 6 kilowatt. That means that that would be about $40 to $45 added to your bill every month. And you got to remember, this is a base rate, meaning it doesn't matter how much you use. You can be on vacation for a month, come back, and your bill would be over $50 without any usage. All right, so before we get all angry and get our pitchforks and stuff, let's try to figure this out from their perspective. Here's the history of how solar has rolled out here in the U.S. and pretty much everywhere else. First, we had Net Energy Metering 1, which was a really good deal for us, the customers, because what they would do is they would buy any extra energy that you had and give you a one-to-one -one credit later. This treated the grid like a big battery, but here's the problem with that. Let's say at high noon, you have the 1.3 million customers who are producing solar power, all selling energy to the grid. There's way more energy available than is needed. People are at work, they're not really using much energy, the, the day hasn't gotten that hot yet, ACs aren't running at full blast yet, and so this energy was not needed. Then later in the day, let's say 7 o'clock, when the sun goes down, people are all home watching TV, and then there is a huge demand for energy. And the grid was forced to say, well, you gave me one kilowatt hour at noon, and now I'll give you this one at 7 o'clock, when prices are much higher for free because one to one. That really was a great deal for us, but it wasn't sustainable. There was no way that that would have worked long term. Then comes net energy metering two. And I kind of thought they had figured this out by this point because what they did is they said, okay, if you want to go solar, you have to also become a time of use customer. And what that means is that your energy prices are different depending on the time of day. Roughly speaking, here in San Diego, midnight to 6 a.m. is super off peak when the prices are really, really cheap. And then, you know, 6 till 4 p.m. is off peak. And then 4 to 9 p.m. is on peak when the prices are the highest. And they did this because that's when the solar power is winding down. So now they'd say, yeah, we'll give you a credit. But if you gave me energy when it's super off peak, we'll give you a super off peak credit, but not an on peak credit, right? That was less good but it was actually a good move because that's really what we need to have we need to have a better balance between incentives and everything else now with net energy metering three they want to not only have all of that but at a base rate just for the privilege of having solar panels now this really irritates me because what they claim is that they're oh they're in it for the lower income people who don't have solar who are paying higher prices now that is true california does have higher prices because for the grid to be giving out this free energy at high peak times, they have to raise rates on everybody. And so as a result, people who do have the money to get a $20,000 solar system are paying way less in energy than people who don't, or people who are renting or have condos or a slew of other things. 
So that part does make sense, but I think my problem is in the execution. Before we get back to the show, I have to tell you about the most remarkable little appliance I've seen in years. This is Lomi, a ridiculously cool, beautiful kitchen electric composter. If you do any amount of cooking, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Food scraps from vegetables, fruit, even coffee grounds and eggshells. This isn't trash, it's the basis for future plant food but usually it takes months to break down. But with Lomi, you can take this and turn it into nutrient-rich dirt in just hours. Using Lomi twice a week can reduce your waste footprint by 50%. It has three modes, an eco mode, which uses just around one kilowatt hour of energy and takes three to five hours. Use grow mode, and in 16 to 20 hours, you have nutrient-rich dirt that's perfect to turn back around and add to a garden or a houseplant. There's even a Lomi approved mode, which can break down Lomi approved bioplastics. Whether you live in a small studio apartment or a farm, convert your food scraps quickly into dirt with Lomi. I've had mine for over a month, and I still get a kick out of seeing the results every morning. Use my link, links.pella.earth slash Ricky, to check out this revolutionary new product today. Huge thanks to Lomi and to you for supporting the companies that support this show. This bill is really poorly done. I hope it does not pass. There's going to be a vote on it. We'll put information and links in the description. But the far better way is to have a much better sense of prices and treat it like a stock market. Imagine if energy prices during the day fluctuated like a stock market. For example, on a high, very sunny, clear day, when there's a ton of energy, it might cost less. And then on a cloudier day, the prices might go up. 4 p.m., prices might go up. But if we treat it this way, then you as a customer would be incentivized to get a battery. And this is actually what Tesla has been trying to do with a small rollout program that they call their virtual power plant. They will talk to the companies and say, how much is energy worth right now? And if it's a really low number, they'll charge their power walls or other batteries up. And then when prices go up, they can say, okay, well, we have a ton of energy. We can sell it back to you, just like a stock market. Now this would incentivize people to get batteries. And that I think is what they're trying to do. But the way they're doing it is really terrible, I think. So the much better approach would just be to let customers know we're no longer gonna just give you a credit for you to use whenever you want and treat us like a big battery at a very expensive cost. Instead, the onus is on you to add a battery for yourself. Now I've been saying for a long time that it is the decade of the battery. So don't think too much about solar. Even if you don't have the money for solar, get a battery because a battery can charge during off peak times and then power your house during on peak times. This might actually save you more money than you think. It depends on the nature of your billing and if you have time of use and other factors, but a battery is the answer. So this proposal is not dead. They're going to vote on it again. But at the end of the day, I think they've used really fluff language like helping lower income people and equity for all and all this kind of stuff. But the reality is they want to find a way to treat solar energy fairly. And the answer really is all customers should also think about getting batteries. Now, when I got my solar in 2011, I got a really small system. That's all I could afford. And then in 2017 or 2018, with my tax credit that I got, my tax return, I got more. And you can treat it the same way. You can save up and get a battery one year or a small solar system, add to it later, get a battery one year. But slowly over time, you can build out a system and keep your house really off the grid. And that's kind of the goal. I think at the end of the day, your goal should be that you generate and store and use your power locally. Because if we could all do that, the strain on the grid would go down and we wouldn't need peaker power plants or natural gas or coal or anything else. And in the long run, we would all win. But what do you think? Could this proposal finally make solar energy more equitable and accessible for everyone? Or would it spell doom and gloom and the end of the solar industry as we know it? Probably something in the middle. Sound off in the comments below. And don't even think about leaving just yet. It is time for a quick recap of our comments of the week. The first one comes from Jabo Punk. He says, me 20 minutes ago, this is gonna be long and boring me now. Wow, kite energy. And this is about our future of bladeless wind turbine video that we had. We'll put a link here. It's pretty good. Um, the second one comes from a video that we just published on this really cool solar powered aircraft, which you got to check out. And it's from Talon. He says, random comment for channel interaction. And to that I say, thank you. So yeah, leave a comment, hit the like button. It doesn't really much matter. It's all engagement and we appreciate you. Thank you.